So we need a volunteer to make notes. I have hard time of choosing between all these hands showing up for a I can also volunteer someone, so I'll wait. <clears throat> All right, let, let's get started. So this is an IPF 96 Berlin and DMM Discrete Mobility Madness meeting. Uh, and the, um, let's get started, so welcome. First, pay attention to a note well. You should be uh, pretty much aware of it. If you are not, just go to the uh, meeting materials and, and read the agenda. I have included the note well in it, or dubbing has. Uh, so, still we need a note taker. Anyone wanting to volunteer? Or... Okay, thank you, Sel. All right, so... Um... Hello, uh, I'm the Jabber scribe, so please make sure you have your name tag on and that both sides are not obscured by, you know, any kind of paper or something you put in there, because I'll be typing out your names and trying to spell them right and put them in a Jabber room so the minute taker can get the name right on the, in the minutes. Thanks. Great. <clears throat> so, uh, so this is the agenda for today. So, for, for, for a long time, we actually had a pretty loose agenda. So uh, a couple of presentations, I have updated the links, so if you go, so you can have the uh, materials. Uh, anything to um, add or change in the agenda? So now it's the time if you have any views. So basically we will go through the, uh, the uh, DMM side of the, of the working group. So we have a couple of updates of the existing documents, what we have in a working group and, and in the working teams. Uh, sure, How about the adoption for WT4 work item? If, if you look in the... Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so after we have completed the DMA side of the agenda, we have some of the uh, maintenance stuff. So we have Charlie to speak, uh, give an update on the imminent IDs. And then we go looking into the other stuff. So a couple of things. Uh, we have few documents that have been lingering around that are in the um, in, in, in our uh, milestones. So as part of the uh, kind of clean, clean the table and get the things done. So we have a couple of calls for the adoption. And once we have done that, to kind of get the sense of the room, we also discuss about the next steps of the working group. So I'll just go to the where we stand at the moment, so the document status. So uh, uh, these are the currently available uh, working group documents to what we have. So MNIDs have been in the last call. We will see here the update from Charlie later on today. But the uh, most likely uh, that document will move into um, ASG, so I will put that out of the working group as soon as possible. 
uh, we will hear about the uh, CPDP, the update. There is no document update, but the um, these guys have been working during this week very hard and prior doing a lot of offline discussions before the meeting. So I think they have something uh, uh, interesting to share with the rest of the working group. Uh, HNP Renum, that document went through the uh, last call. It's pending for the proto write-up, so it's going to move out of the working group. Uh, LMA control map parameters also uh, went through the last call. It's now pending for the HS to do the proto write up, so it will move to the HC. Uh, Mac multi homing, so it's a working group document, so I'll put that into the working group last call so that we can finally get rid of it. It should be pretty straightforward. So it has had a couple of earlier reviews and we have reflected all the comments that we received. So it should be in the right track. And then we have on-demand mobility. So we will hear also an update about that. And if, if there's nothing controversial after the, today's presentation, that will also go for the uh, move forward. Then we have uh, these two documents, candidates for the working group IDs. So we have the uh, distribute mobility anchoring. So we will hear the update from from the uh, this working team from Anthony. And the uh, also working team four, they have published the uh, deployment models document. So we will make also a kind of adoption call for that. And so pretty much to the um, complete the milestones, what we have. So we will return to this uh, milestone part and the uh, what to do next and that part. But once we have moved out the work that we have now in as working group documents and, and get these couple of missing pieces adapted and moved forward, we have pretty much cleaned our existing milestones and and the uh, this is kind of sign for us that the uh, we need to think about what to do next when we grow up. Okay. All right. So then let's go back to the actual agenda. So uh, the um, first thing for today is the update of the uh, FPC. So uh, I think it's Marco who is going to give the update, right? If you need the uh, laser sword, mm -hmm. it has, I will show up the slide, so just send me. Say me when you want to. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is a brief update of the uh, FPC work. <coughs> Oops, not this one. Uh, uh, this one. That looks good. Yeah. So um, it was originally called forwarding path and signaling management. We call it just FPC forwarding path control. Um, next slide. Um, just in brief, what's that about? So DMM has a lot of work. So um, this particular work item is about the separation of a um, mobility gateways control plane from its data plane. Per the DMM objectives, it enables the distribution of um, control plane functions independently of data plane functions. So you have a lot of flexibility here. And this work is in particular about the functional architecture, which we deploy in between the control plane and the data plane and the semantics uh, that apply in between these functional elements to allow operation of mobility management and whatever is required here. Next slide. So in brief, what, what's the progress since last IDF? So we did not update version three, which doesn't sound like a lot of progress. <clears throat> in fact, um, in version three, which was pretty, uh, 
pretty busy in terms of um, operational description, messaging. Uh, in the uh, appendix, we also had a, a young model. Um, it was not very sound in um, having two operational models. I will have a slide uh, next that um, may uh, make you remind what, what was happening since version 3. So um, it was not very uh, sound to have two operational modes, which we supported at that point in time. Um, some features per the model, which we considered for, in particular, mode one, uh, lacked some um, well features like session representation, um, which we would like um, to fix. So uh, at last IDF meeting, Satoru presented the first idea of how to bring these both operational modes together. Uh, and enable a lot of flexibility by a common data model, which we would briefly like to introduce today. Um, the team since last ITF made quite some progress, in particular during this face-to-face -face meeting we met a couple of times to drive this work ahead. And um, now we don't come up with something entirely new, but we evolved the data model and the operational aspects from version 3 to enable that kind of commonality and flexibility. And um, that new model enables different levels of abstraction in between control and data plane and enables a great level of implementation and how you actually deploy it. Next slide. So this is in brief um, from, from last ITF meeting per version three, where we supported two modes, in particular one suitable for a deployment where in between data plane and control plane, there is a network controller which can support some level of abstraction. So uh, not everything from the data plane configuration needs to be exposed to the control plane. Another mode uh, was about the direct deployment. So uh, the mobility control plane had direct access to particular physical data plane nodes. So there are differences in how the semantics uh, can apply in between these two functional elements. So per mode one operation, we had um, a model which was um, in a simplified way describing a rule. So the control plane simply pushed the rule down to the data plane or to the network controller, which says, um, I want you to configure that kind of setup, which says um, traffic descriptors should be treated as per one or multiple properties. So properties were treatment actions like encapsulation, QS enforcement. So there was a descriptive approach and uh, the agent function actually was supposed to um, enforce uh, one or multiple local control messages to um, set up this kind of configuration. It was simplistic, it was um, um, functional but it lacked some, some features. <clears throat> so in particular also for, since mode two operation came in, we had different kind of messaging, different semantics, um, no mode, uh, no, no data model for mode two operation. So we saw the need to harmonize the data models and the operation in the view of both modes operation. Next slide. So this is actually what uh, Satoru presented at last ITF meeting. Uh, showing in an illustrative way um, how the version 3 uh, data models, so here mode 1 operation which works on ports, which is a key for a rule, um, traffic descriptors and the treatment actions for that traffic, that means of properties, and for mode 2, which is uh, somehow uh, binding attributes for a local configuration to context information, um, into a common data model, which um, has uh, different uh, granularity to be exposed to the control plane. So um, I leave it up to you to explain uh, the data model then uh, in the next step. So um, the basic idea is that even topology information can be maintained in a data model uh, and uh, either in a detailed or an abstract view be exposed to the control plane. Um, there is uh, data structures in that hold the uh, detailed configuration on the data plane, so detailed tunnel configuration, detailed QS configuration, address translation as needed, and um, other structures which can be bound uh, to that detailed uh, configuration enable some level of abstraction. So if you can 
have pre-configuration of some settings on the data plane or on the network controller. The control plane can easily refer to such pre-configuration and adjust uh, such configuration uh, as needed for a particular mobile node. So um, that actually is suitable to support um, different kinds of uh, modes as we intended to. And um, I would like to hand over to, to Lyle to explain a bit more about some examples of, of the modeling. Next slide, please. So uh, what we have here is from the version three, figure 15, uh, we decided to pick on an example. There were, there were a few. We decided to pick on basically kind of an inline example, very similar to um, mode two, where we're essentially in one single command, sending down from an RPC perspective, basically what we need. So here we have the port, the tunnel information QS, and the uh, traffic selector along with the HMP. So all of your mobility information is sent in, in one command. And uh, based upon the new data model, we're able to do basically several different things. And we'll show you some styles here in the next couple of slides that are based upon RESTConf and the JSON rendering that you would see typically with a Yang model. Um, and show you how we're supporting both kind of the, the typical older model one where we have some things that could be built on the fly in terms of configuration and reuse it, and the, the mode two, where we're very much an inline sort of activity. So next slide, please. So our first example here up on the left with the JSON representation is uh, very much what we see in the older example from uh, uh, version three. Uh, so we did have in uh, version three the idea of a context in mode two, and we had the idea of a port or, or a rule in, uh, in, in mode or model one. And so what we uh, did was harmonize the idea of ports, rules, and context in here. And I'll explain here a little bit uh, kind of the relationships. But uh, what we have is, is essentially a context being built in the uh, style of a model two, uh, along with the HMP data that you saw before, the tunnel information and, and QS information. So. This is very similar to uh, this design. However, in the new model, um, it's very RPC based and none of this information is shareable. And in other words, all the data that we provide here isn't uh, provided in another naming context that can be reused through subsequent commands. But it's essentially what we had in, in the previous version. So there really is no loss of uh, what we had in, in that particular mode. In example two, we have an example of sharing, and this can be done as a single or multiple transactions. So this can be done all at once, so very similar in style uh, to the single RPC call. Or we could actually, you know, it's a list here, so we could actually run the first context and the second context. Here we actually have an example of uh, basically two particular bearers being built, if we think in terms of 3GPP, like a default bearer as well as a um, uh, dedicated bearer. And so the, the new concept that we have with respect to context is the idea of basically hierarchy. And uh, what you see is the reference being the parent context in context two. So from a context one perspective, it's very similar to what we have in example one with this data being set up. We call out a few other things uh, typically like base charging information, any other charging information that's specific to that particular context. And then when we look at the relationship in context two here with the parent context, uh, we are able to actually pull in this case uh, any sort of information that's required for instantiation of the context inside the node from its parent. So in this case, we didn't have to actually specify the base charging information. And you'll notice we didn't worry about an IP address or an HMP in, in this design. So those essentially are implied in, and picked up by the agent and provisioned uh, into uh, properly into context two. So there you see the ability for us to, to have that sort of hierarchical referencing. So, um, and in this example, right, this is something we couldn't easily do in the old model. We're actually creating two particular uh, dedicated bears uh, or dedicated tunnels in this case and providing them back to one mobility session. So this is a, a little bit more exotic example of something that was a, would require at least two transactions in, in the previous model. Next slide, please. Um, so this is actually a, a much more uh, model one uh, version three style. 
so here we actually uh, peel out only the information that's uh, available to Context One, which is the tunnel information, and we make a reference to ports. Now, in, in the previous model, you would have, as a separate activity, had to actually uh, provision the ports and then provision the context. Here we see the RPC. We can actually handle the idea of actually provisioning the ports. What we're doing is taking the same information that was in originally in example one. We're providing more naming context around it so that it can be reused later. So think of it as basically parameter recycling as we, uh, we move through the operations. So here we actually spell out the ports and, and, and there's a, long, a much longer model that's very similar to what we showed a few slides ago where we have essentially ports and uh, which uh, are now uh, referring to policy groups, uh, individual policies. What we used to call old ports or rules, we now just call them rules. That's what they were before, so we just made it very obvious in the new model. And then we, we call it out. So we see a lot of that QoS information that was common between these as being here. And then, once again, we can create another context. And here in this example, we're just reusing the, the port ID. So you see that context over the wire representation becoming much smaller. And so like the previous example, we can do this as one RPC call, uh, basically in the design, or we can do this as multiple and representing a fact that a context can be built later, but we can reuse information that was sent in subsequent RPCs. Um, so we've actually implemented uh, at Sprints a uh, version three model one system. And what I can tell you is this is far more efficient uh, in terms of design than what we currently have in terms of the number of northbound of, of client to agent uh, activities, uh, far more efficient. So once again, these are examples based upon the JSON rendering. If we were to say use RESTConf and, and they're not representative of the final Yang model, but I, I think you get an idea. So um, just to kind of summarize here, right? We, we have much more flexibility. You can still be very much uh, the old single RPC mode two. You can very much inline accommodate multiple uh, mode or model one operations from version three all in one shot and it's one converged model. So next slide. So conceptually we've changed quite a few things and the uh, naming conventions have changed. Probably the, the biggest change here is ports. Um, we now call them rules. They, they were rules in the first place. Um, but we do have the ability now to just call them what they are. I think that's also good for control plane implementers who are receiving rules from a diameter perspective. It's very obvious then how that translates into FPC. Properties, we had two kinds of properties in version three. We had those that were directly related to treatment action. They're now a part of the rules. So once again, trying to get back to that obviousness piece for designers so that they can look at a property and, and actually very easily realize where it belongs inside the model. And so we've separated those out as, as, uh, pro as uh, actions, uh, basically treatment actions under the rules. And some properties we were using for administrative or, or context, and, and so you'll see them move higher up in the model and kind of stay there. And then uh, we're looking at reconciling those with some of the ephemeral state and some of the other states, because a lot of those properties were more related to uh, being able to hold on to much longer transactions where we only had partial information in the control plane. Um, descriptors uh, actually had two names inside model three. So when we actually push them over in the config tree in, 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 in model one, in, in version three, excuse me, uh, when we push them over the config tree, we called them descriptors. When we actually instantiated them, we called them forwarding rules. They're now just called descriptors. So that was something that was very confusing for, for us developing. Um, because it was the same data structure, but a completely different name. So um, sometimes it, it seemed quite maddening uh, to actually deal with this. Um, but we've cleaned that up. Uh, we, we've cleaned that up as well. You're going to find them in one place in, in the model. You're, you're going to know where they're at. When we say a descriptor, we say an action, you know where to go. Um, so um, definitely a, a large uh, cleanup there. We have several new concepts, as we've talked about. So hierarchy. And with that hierarchy establishment, you have several options here, and along with the what we showed in a couple of ex examples, basically inheriting properties. We also have fate sharing. So if you can actually remove the, the roots of the hierarchy, everything else goes. This actually optimizes the delete model. And in, in uh, version three, model two, what we did was we kind of had a context that could span multiple commands. This really takes care of that and allows us to have context and subcontext naturally. Uh, this also cleans up the amount of data that we have to repeat. There, we're really in the model at this point. 
if you're repeating data, it's because either you didn't understand that you had an opportunity to collapse the data or you're repeating it intentionally for some other purpose. It's, it's not something by accident. Um, ports were, were formerly a couple of different types, um, but ports in this model uh, equate to uh, virtual rules or virtually instantiated rules in the old model. Um, and we actually uh, call them out. Uh, really, port was so overloaded and had so many concepts in the old model, it, it was just kind of tough to figure out um, you know, what kind of port you were dealing with. Um, we do have structures used for policy grouping uh, that are available for us now. These are uh, convenience layers that allow us to, to basically consolidate and collapse and get to a much more concise over the wire representation. And with that, really, um, that's policy groups, policies, uh, which do apply order, and then the rules themselves, descriptors and actions. So once again, when you're looking for a particular data structure in the new model, it's in one location, it hasn't been renamed. Um, it, it should, we believe, pass the obviousness test of, of where data goes. Anyway, um, I think, uh, next slide. I think we'll hand back to, uh, or to Marco, or we'll just go through this. Um, as far as next steps of, of what we're thinking about, um, so we're actually going to sit down. We, we have the concepts in. I think uh, generally uh, myself and, and my co-authors are, are generally happy with the progress we've made in the convergence. I, I don't know that we came in thinking that everything was possible in terms of converging the models. And, and after this week, I think we're quite confident that what um, was proposed is, is definitely um, a, a good way to go. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. So we're gonna actually finish the descriptions, the high level ideas, as well as the operational aspects, getting that over the wire representation. We'll then go ahead and define the actual Yang models and the RPCs and, and kind of get that out to make sure that we have uh, the, the proof, if you will, of the consolidation and the optimization of, of the uh, over the wire representation. And once we have that, we'll really start, the, the, the revision four work really begins. So we'll go ahead and actually put those models into Rev4, update the text, and, and try and get that out. Um, our planning, uh, even though some folks uh, may be going on vacation and stuff, uh, no excuse for us. Uh, so we plan to have an update out uh, and, and get feedback uh, in the September timeframe. So with that, uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Is there any uh, security mechanism to protect the messages? Um, not at this point, right? We are defining a Yang model, and essentially the the over you know the the overall interface operations. And I think in this particular document, what's going to be interesting is I, I think we may stop there, and then there may be subsequent work required for how it may be rendered over the wire. Because if we go back to like a mode one versus a mode two, in a mode one where we may have something like a, a, a SDN controller, then we're really looking at the northbound interface technology for the uh, SDN controller for security in some respects. In mode two, uh, where it would be uh, it was still the, the same Yang RPC but rendered over a specific over the wire format, that would probably require another draft. And, and there we would probably see the over the wire security semantics built in. At this point, we haven't contemplated anything specifically in the RPC because we are really talking about the conceptual operations of, of forwarding at this time. But okay, a um, couple of questions from my side. So, once you get the H04 uh, out, do you do you envision that that version would be then ready for the kind of for last call? I believe so. I don't think any of us, I, I'm looking at my co-authors, I, I don't think any of us would have any objection. I think version four should be good enough for last call. Okay, good. So, uh, and, and did I hear correctly that this stuff is not anymore any, any theoretical, but there's an implementation based on the uh, the yes. model that you have? Yes, so, so at Sprint, um, we have an implementation uh, with some of our research. And so um, a lot of our feedback, and, and I thank my co-authors for bearing with me, because I know my feedback can be quite extensive, um, but a, a lot of our feedback is, is based upon what we've discovered as, as we've been implementing. 
Okay, great. I said, Krishnan. So I had a comment. So if you have an implementation, it's like really good to document it somewhere. So if you look at like RFC 6982, it talks about uh, how to write like an implementation status section. So what you do is like just go in there, um, put in some information about what you actually implemented and what you didn't, really. Okay. Right? Like so, I know it's not going to be complete, like thing of this, but that would be really good and it really helps um, when you go to the IESG if we actually see that section in there. It's not going to be published with the RFC. Okay. Uh, so that's the way it's designed. So that it goes with the draft until it actually gets published. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, and if other people have implementations, they can also put it into the same section if you want to do that. All right. Oh, thank okay. you for the information. Yeah. And the other thing, one more thing I want to talk about is like, um, there's some stuff happening in Yang right now about like operational state, like how you figure that stuff out. So I think it's something you need to keep an eye on at this point. I don't know if you know there's like a draft in NetMod, like, and, and it's like this huge discussion. So probably that's something you want to keep an eye out for. If you don't, don't know the name of draft, I can probably uh, send an email to you. To, um, uh, well, we've, we've been looking, and uh, that was actually a big point of discussion this week, because we had created some of our own operational state parameters in yeah. version three. Yeah. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think, and please do send us uh, the, the information, because, you know, there's only a few drafts out, right? So we may miss a few. Um, but uh, right now, we're, we're, we're take, we've really taken a step back from the operational side in, in hopes that, that there's a good solid solution here okay. coming from NetMod. Okay. Um, I, I think that we have so much other work to do okay. um, that uh, we'll, we'll probably try to, I mean, always adopt as much as we can, right? As little new yang as possible. Okay, I'll send out a note to right. the list and then. Thank you. Okay. This is Alex Petrescu. So I, I had the uh, young models are more and more uh, important uh, throughout uh, IETF. Um, before there were young models, we configured protocols using MIB. Yes. And uh, I noticed uh, PBU and PBA on the slide. Yes. So I'm, I would like to ask whether there is any relationship between the Young model that you de develop and the proxy mobile IPv6 MIB, or it's two different. Uh... I, I, I don't know. Sri, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, I think the FPC interface. Sri Gandavali, sorry. Yeah. See, the FPC interface is between a control plane node and a data plane node, whereas the mobility signaling is between mobility entities. So those are two different interfaces. So we are not replacing a PMIP protocol with the Yang model. So you, so you basically already had this one for as for example, yeah. to kind of boil it into some concrete. In, in fact, yeah. if you want to go back to the to the slide, please. Right. So so here, right. So we, we see the control plane, the LMAC, and then we envision somewhere within that LMAC is the FPC client. So so here we would expect right business as usual. But um, as you can see, right, there, at this point in, in this boundary, we've really left the control signaling side of the world, the, the standard PMIP, and we're now into that separation piece. So they do obviously share the same data concepts and ideas in terms of life cycle for the session because it's directly stimulated by the, the PBU and, and, and obviously the PBA. But uh, we're, we're really working on fundamentally, you know, a, a slightly, you know, inside or in the box sort of uh, messaging here. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Good work and the um, um, waiting for the update, not holding my breath for it, but, but the, um, you, you have some history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with everyone. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited for the uh, waiting for the 04. We kind of get this work completely and then move to the next step of the uh, work. Uh, all right. Well, and we can talk about history tomorrow. Yeah. In um, Don't get me started. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a certain working groups where it, it belongs to a tradition and that nothing happens in the first three years. And, yeah. All right, the next thing on the agenda is the uh, on-demand mobility. So, Danny. Okay. Um, the magic wand is there if you need. So it doesn't broadcast the slides, but you can pinpoint people in the audience. That's yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. I just wanted to provide a brief update about on demand in total, not a specific uh, document, document, because there are a couple of. Uh, there's a couple of topics that are related to on demand. So just to give a context. So next slide, please. So it's actually, uh, this is the work that I managed to collect, which is related to on demand. Uh, there's the on demand the mobility management draft, which I understand is a uh, work group last call has completed this week. Uh, after some intensive work in the past couple of uh, weeks. Uh, then there is uh, work uh, showing various use cases which are related to um, uh, the various types of IP address uh, uh, provisioning and uh, checking whether there are some gaps and, uh, and whether additional um, flags or parameters are required. And this is led by sale and he will present that there's a new draft it won't be presented this uh, face to face but i'm sure you're going to present that in the next one right uh third is the uh, dhcp extensions to support uh the conveying of the type of address uh the mobile node requires and what the network had provided uh it has been an individual draft for quite some time. I got some useful comments in the uh, previous ITF. Um, I read RFC 7227 and have made changes to the uh, proxy, I'm sorry, sorry, to the prefix, but I didn't publish that yet because uni you asked to be over the on-demand draft before we continue with DHCP. So now I can continue with that. Uh, I must say, uh, Suresh, uh, actually, originally I copied the format from RC3633 because I didn't want to invent a new format, and that misled me. And I was a little surprised that there is no uh, update to RFC3633 uh, so that at least I mean, what will happen right now is uh, DHCP servers will have to support two uh, formats for uh, prefixes, and that's not good. Okay, uh, so this question. So, RFC 3633 is not going to be updated, it's going to be gone, okay? So, RFC 3315, which is the base DHCP v6, is getting updated, and uh, it's actually folding in a bunch of stuff. Okay. okay. Okay? So, if you look at, like, the 3315 base draft, uh, you will see what's going to be there. So, like, if you take take a look at it when you get a chance and see if you uh, want to, if you think something is missing, that's the place to do it. Okay, it's 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 in working group last call. Oh, okay. Now, okay. So okay. do it in the next week or so. Okay. Okay. I'm not an expert in the HCP. Yeah. Doesn't matter. So okay. the so the option format should be in I think 70 to 27. Yeah, right? I saw that. Right. Okay. So. So that should be the advice for all DHCP options going forward. Okay, so if you think there's something in, I, I don't see it, but if you see something in 3315 bis that is not obeying the formats in there, then it's something oh, okay. that needs to come up. Or send me a note, I can take a look okay. and, and do something. But uh, yeah, so 3315 bis is the place for like the actual okay. just Sunny 27 is for options. And so if, as long as free will be, will, will, um, It'll be obsoleted by okay. the 3315 bis right. when okay. it gets approved. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, I will I will release a new version after this uh, face to face. Uh, another 
another topic that I think Alex has pointed out in the list is the need for stateless IP address uh, support for on-demand. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do any work on that yet. I think you did. So, you, yeah, we, we, we have a bunch of those. Just, I, I, and those, those just need to be kind of refreshed. You had a container, um, a draft with a container. Was it an, uh, an extension to yes, uh, so, yeah, advertisement? Yes, yeah. yeah, so there's been a couple of works around earlier. So there's one that has been kind of described in this working group, which, which basically adds the uh, kind of coloring to the uh, prefixes. Then the, um, there is a related work that we hope to kind of adopt and, and kind of build on that was the uh, uh, the work that we were doing in MIF. So you had the uh, the provisioning domains that you could actually encapsulate this kind of information about the, uh, you could put the context around the IP addresses or prefixes that you are, that you are uh, advertising in your other advertisements. So, <clears throat> so yeah, there, there is existing work on this area, so we kind of but myth now is in a yeah yeah but so there's a couple of ways around it so we will discuss that at the end of the meeting but the um, one thing is that that the uh, the ADs or the AD Terry who was responsible for myth said that he can AD sponsor stuff that's one way or then we just like uh, take what we had we had pretty well thought to extend solution or we can bring them here and kind of try to bring them through this working group and, and, and complete that work what we started. So we did have a working group drafts already on this topic. Right. Yeah, so I, I don't kind of see or, or be willing kind of starting from scratch. Exactly, so I'm willing to help Yes. If you want to bring it to the working group and you need help, uh, at least to add the on-demand stuff. Um, yeah, so yeah, that was kind of long-term plan. It has been a longer-term plan than anyone planned, so. <laughs> so, really. so on that, can we bring them here, Yoni, instead of AD sponsor, because that way we can ensure everything is tried properly? <laughs> Quite a bit of work already. Yeah, so, so there's a couple of uh, issues uh, in there. So first thing is the review stuff, right? So I, I want, so that's like kind of like a fundamental document and we still, still have to figure out how to get review on that thing, right? And so DMM on, could on be which a place. document are you talking? Not the multiple interfaces, the, the specific uh, stuff, routing right? address. Yeah, right? okay. So, uh, so another proposal that has been floated last night, like when Yoni and I went for dinner, like people are talking about it, like not me and not him, but uh, is that HomeNet would be another place which has the same issue because they need these things too. So I think it's something that needs to get worked out, but uh, that draft is almost complete. Like when MIP first closed down, right? Like we are, the draft is ready to go. It's just that we need to figure out the logistics on how to do it, right? Um, and get the review. So yeah. the, the review part is what lacked in in myth, and uh, unless like we got like four people like you know raising the hand right now, it doesn't make sense to bring it here. Like it's like just as bad as AD sponsoring. Okay, so uh, okay, go ahead. How, no, so how 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 can we progress? Because we want to we want, to, I mean, at least from the uh, uh, small on demand point of view, we need to add the support uh, uh, mm -hmm. to that draft. Should we do it here? Should, should we wait for MIF? What, what should we do? Yeah, so it should give completion. I think, um, you know, I think HomeNet is dealing with many other things. I'm really worried if you take it there, it will completely go on a tangent. Um, Alex Petrescu. Um, I'm not sure whether it is really easy to consider the earlier Juni's work uh, as uh, ready to be submitted to ISG. Because since then, the on-demand mobility, even the terminology has evolved. Right, the I, concept, I, I, didn't, so I didn't mean uh, uh, submit to IESG. I wanted to go through uh, on it and see what we need, what we need to add 
in order to support on demand and then do that. But I didn't want to start work from scratch. I mean, it does make sense. Mm. Okay. I, I, okay. So, so actually, we're yeah. Waiting. So, so we need to remember one thing. So, the work that was done in Myth was was kind of building the uh, framework, and it was realized a long ago that when you want to do something mobility specific, you need to extend it. Extend it. So, you need to actually define the stuff that goes inside the framework. So, the framework okay. is the thing that that is kind of because it, it brings the security, it brings the kind of the overall rules and, and stuff like that. But if you want then the kind of actual coloring part of the prefixes or some other semantics, you need to define the option in the respective group that needs that kind of functionality. And, and that would be here. Okay, so what you're saying is you prefer not to touch that draft, but to finalize it and to write a new one that extends that draft for the specific coloring that we're talking about, yeah. the, so, the address type. So, so, right? um, so if I take a shot at Yoni, right? Like, so that draft is like necessary, but not sufficient stuff for you, your things to work, okay? Right. So, and and it's very defined at a very kind of abstract level, like what the PVD is. So, um, so how do you associate some mobility kind of meaning to PVD needs to get done here, not, not somewhere else? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, so like, but but I will need to ref reference an RFC, and it's not. You don't need to reference an RFC. You can reference a draft. That's still okay. an active draft. Yeah. The line. other MIF draft is not expired. It's like still active draft. Um, the working group is dead, right? But the draft is still alive. So reference yeah. the draft and let's figure out how that draft ends up, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, but it doesn't. You don't need to refer to an RFC. The okay. Referring to a draft is perfectly I, I, fine. I will reference a draft. If it becomes an RFC, I will have to change the reference. Correct. And and it has to. So so the new draft cannot complete before. Correct. Okay. Correct. But yeah. so you're Sorry. saying so, at so, some point, like this draft can progress all the way until you get an RFC number, and the RFC editor queue will be held. And there's like a star misref state. That's where it's going to be oh, held. Like okay. it's yeah. waiting for reference to get through. Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay. So and then we have to figure some. some yeah. Product. So just just okay. So once we got stuck on the first slide of this 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 presentation and stuff, but <laughs> the. Uh, I won't continue. The, I'm, I'm talking over the the, the other slides are. Okay. So, saying, so we don't the see. good thing about the design that that we did so in the need for this this framework is the thing that what it actually encapsulates are x are array options so so if you design an router advertisement option you can kind of prototype without the framework because it's basically is, is a valid option but in, at the end, you will encapsulate that inside the container that is, was defined in MIF, so to get the kind of PVD semantics and stuff like that. So, so you can start kind of thinking about how the uh, the mobility specific option would look like, and the things that you would need, and even write code around it. But the uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So the last uh, uh, topic I have is the link state change exposure. This was something that I presented, I think, in Prague, mm -hmm. and that is exposing link state uh, uh, events to the application through a socket interface or through some extensions. Uh, I was planning to continue working on that. There are very various issues regarding this. Uh, in, including, is it, good, is it in, a good thing to expose these things to so, application level or not? So I, I think there's an existing work, previous work. So the DNA working group a long ago had, had to talk RFC on this. There, there was an RFC that was uh, written by Alper, but that was exposing data link uh, uh, events to the stack, not to the application. Uh, I, I, I will. I, I don't want to start no, a long discussion around that, but I'm I, I'm planning to present that again in the next okay. ITF, and I will also expose the various problems or questions uh, for the group to evaluate. And you know, if the group says, "Ah, don't work on it," or "Yeah, continue working," and we would like to help, any feedback like that will be great. 
Okay, so this question, so yeah, as a co-author on that RFC, that's 4957 that you're talking about, right? Like with so, it, the one with alpha, the one that that uh, exposed data link events to this. Correct, and, and that's really really old. It it could probably use an update. Like we were working with GPRS and stuff, so it's like very old, right? Like right. so, and and Ethernet bridge changes and stuff. But uh, yeah, so. So the, that DNS stuff was done to provide input to the IP interface, right? So right. to figure out like when to do the DNA procedures when the interface gets initialized. So if you want to do something on top of it, you should probably look at IP DNA stuff, which is like I think 6059, like where uh, it tells you you're trying to figure out if if your link attachment changed. So not look at the link layer events themselves, right? So the chain is going to be your link layer says something has changed, then you start. IP connectivity chain checks. Okay, so that's like it's done by uh, doing like a RSRA probe or a NSNA probe or a DHCPv6 confirm probe, something like that, right? Use like the IP layer probe to figure out if you want to do something more. Okay, but this this is all probes that are being done by by various components in the stack itself. Correct. And and we're talking about hey, does the application need the, the application that opened the socket? Does it need to know about that? For, for example, for for things that are being done through SIP, uh, SIP has the ability to uh, uh, detect uh, uh, disconnections and overcome those disconnections by reopening sockets or, or new negotiations. Is this interesting? Do we be, now do we want to be able to trigger SIP and say, hey, this happened. Uh, this is the time to try and uh, and, and there are and there are more uh, subtle. Uh, issues, which I'm trying not to get into right now. I'll, I'll show that in the presentation, and then we can decide whether we want to okay. continue that. So, so there's a couple of schools of thought. Okay, so the like there was this MIF connection manager school of thought. Like I think Dapeng like uh, was involved in it, uh, which says like hide this below the application. Okay, that's one school of thought. That's exactly one of the debates. Do we want to hide it or not? And and right, and the other school of thought, which is like the uh, some stuff that, like I wrote, is like a document. I think Dapeng was involved in that one too. Is that um, it's it's some kind of guidelines for applications, right? Which says like, okay, if you have multiple address possibilities or interfaces, like try to use all of them. Okay, whenever connectivity keeps up going up and down, like make sure that like you know you use a like working set of locators, right? So. Don't think of it in the classic mobility sense because it's also multi-homing stuff. So, like, we need to be careful because it's very hard to get that kind of recommendation right. Okay. So, and first problem, right? Second problem is people have gone ahead and done whatever the hell they want, right? Like, so if you look at like Microsoft, like if you look at like Metro Application Guide, they've done something like this. Whatever is in this draft, like it's a personal draft. I think it's like draft dang MIF application guidelines or something. Where we say like these set of things, but they've already been implemented now, right? Like even though it's not a not even a working group draft anywhere, it's it's in Windows Phone. Like Android has something very similar to that. So like the the OS stack vendors have gone ahead; they've done whatever they wanted. Like so, uh, best you can do is like probably try to document these efforts because I don't think we are at this point where we can provide like new guidance for this. That's my feeling. No head, okay. no AD hat. Okay, so uh, let's discuss that, that next time. I'll try and bring all these points, and we can decide whether we want this work or not. Yes, Charlie. So, Charlie Perkins, I'm very short. There's also, I think, RFC 4907. That's uh, architectural implications of link indicators, which I recently was made aware of again. So okay. take a look at that. Too. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm done. you're done. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, the, the the thing about the the um, uh, zero seven version of the actual on demand draft, so um, it got uh, reviews and those have been addressed and those who actually gave the uh, reviews have acknowledged that they are happy with the changes. I went to through the draft, so the, to me I I'm not going to run a new working group last call on that stuff. So I'm just going to move the uh, document into the uh, further in the process so um, so we um, for now from your point of view you are done so um, that will happen after this meeting so thanks thank you and thank you for the help uh, from the group
All right, so the um, uh, next one is the uh, mobility, distributed mobility anchoring. So, uh, Anthony. Uh, I'm going to go through the update as I explained it. Uh, last time there were two comments, so I'm going to address those two comments. One comment was to align it with the uh, the job of the work, 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 uh, work team, the fourth work team, and the other comment is to is to uh, expand the solution uh, more clearly. Uh, so. Uh, so we did this update. Uh, the update includes some of the changes, but there's not really a lot of changes, but rather more on clarifying uh, how the solution works. Uh, so ba basically, this draft is on distributed anchoring, so it explains what the distributed anchoring uh, needs to do. And in particular, a lot of these functions already exist, so uh, we'll emphasize on the uh, new functions later, okay, in the example. So in the next slide, we are going to give some examples. What we find in this baseline solution is that uh, given the capability of the anchor uh, being distributed, uh, we are able to do the solution, uh, the mobility solution. Uh, and in this case, we do not need to add new changes to the standard, uh, not because we don't need it, but the changes are already made by other jobs. Uh, such as the uh, the on the band mobility, there are two different different addresses, so they are already there. So we just reference to other draft and what are the changes are. Therefore, this will become just an informational draft uh, to give the baseline for the solution. And the solution will have two cases. One case is that if you don't need to change the IP address, and the other case is when you uh, need to change IP address, just the two cases uh, only. And when you keep the IP address, you uh, we also elaborate into cases where you have a centralized control plane and when, and then you have a hierarchical network and so on, other examples. So those are the examples. Uh, so in the next slide, we go through the two. Uh, okay, th these are the changes that we have made. Uh, we reference to architecture draft. Uh, uh, in fact, it had already referenced to many other jobs, uh, such as the signaling, uh, the on-demand mobility, or the job, uh, if they're already there, because the new the architecture job was new, so it referenced to that. And then, as for the solution, we basically do a cleanup in this job, uh, very, very carefully, and try to uh, explain things more clearly um, and correct any mistakes that are there. And then I'm going to go for the two solutions again uh, in the next slide. Uh, so that's the first case is that when you don't need to make any, uh, when you don't need the session continuity, so you just, so uh, let me see, when we go for this draft, the only solution we need to concentrate is to take advantage that you have multiple anchors. If you keep your own anchor, then there's nothing new, but the central mobility is already doing the job. So we only look at the case in which we have multiple angles. How do we take advantage of it? And that's one case is that we move the IP address of the new anchor. The other case is to move to the new anchor, but use the old IP address. So the, so the first case is that we just use the new IP address of the new anchor. And that's very, very straightforward. Uh, uh, basically, the section will close and then you open. And then we go through the, go, uh, in the next slide, we will we go through the uh, workflow. Uh, well, I mean, the, the architecture already, uh, is taking the centralized control plan and distributed plan, which is consistent with the architecture job and the solution. So in this case, uh, we search have a first, uh, first uh, in the first anchor, first, in the first anchor, uh, we had allocated address, we have the flow, and then when we move to the new uh, anchor, uh, it closes the flow and then allocate a new uh, IP address. Now that allocation of IP address will be needed uh, even when you keep the old anchor, there's something new in 
and you'll see later, okay? Uh, so uh, whether you need to use the I, new IP address or whether you use the old IP address because of, of the capability of the new anchor. So, uh, so this IP address will be allocated again, even in the next case. So in this case, it's straightforward because you're new, in a new anchor, so you use the IP address, okay? But then, when we go to the next slide, uh, that's the case where we need the session continuity. So the new anchor is going to have the IP1 as well as IP2. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the basic difference for issue builder mobility. Uh, if it's centralized mobility, you might have only keep the IP1 only. Uh, but because you had other section, uh, if a new section is able to use the new IP address, therefore it's going to the, the new anchor will be in, in charge of both IP1 and IP2. Okay, that's the that's one of nature. But it doesn't need new change in the standard because they are already there. Uh, the uh, the work team one had already worked that out. So we go for the uh, workflow in the next slide again. Uh, so uh, so in addition to uh, to the 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 new prefix uh, which is allocated. It has to keep the OP fix, so we uh, we will request the, the OP fix, and it does the uh, so the first anchor will release the P fix, uh, and uh, so this is basically a P fix uh, delegation from anchor one to anchor two. Uh, it's a P basic P fix delegation, and uh, there are different ways to do the P fix delegation. You can just do the command from anchor one to anchor two or you use a DXCP server. And in this case, we just take, uh, this is just an example, we use a DXCP server. So the first, uh, the first uh, anchor releases the prefix, and then the new anchor requests the prefix, and then the anchor reply, uh, you get the prefix. Uh, so uh, it will do the raw, uh, and raw advertisement of the new prefix. So it configured with the new IP address so it can continue with the flow uh, that it had from before uh, for the session continuity. And when the session terminates, uh, when it terminates, there's no need to use uh, for the new anchor to take care of the OIP address. Um, uh, so we just let the DHCP prefix delegation to time out uh, because the prefix delegation has a, has a time. So it just time out, okay. Now, there are other details you can add to it. For example, if, if the section hasn't finished, what are you going to do? Then you will probably need to renew the prefix delegation, and then you have to keep continuing the prefix. But if suppose that the section has finished already, then uh, you will just wait for the prefix delegation to time out. When it times out, then the prefix delegation will time out, so the prefix will move back to the previous network, uh, so you don't have to uh, take care of all these new uh, prefixes uh, for the new prefix so so the so the uh, so the big to make the routing simpler and then and then when you need to start the new prefix now notice that we have also dedicated the new prefix to there so if there's a new flow it would in the bottom of the slide it would just use the new prefix uh, without complicating the uh, mobility and mobility solution so this is some sort of like a, uh, like a baseline solution. Uh, basically, we find that uh, when you have digital mobility, digital anchor, uh, we are able to do the anchoring. And this the solution is based, uh, well, other, uh, the other detail was just, for example, it could be hierarchical network or other thing we can add to it later. But we just keep this as a base solution, as an informational job, using the function, the addition that are already made by other group other team and then give a solution for that. Okay, so uh, so we have worked out for, the team had already worked it for a long time, so we, uh, so we would uh, like to get, get, uh, get some feedback from the, from the group again. Are there any questions? Can you make sure the terminology you cross reference to WT4 work item? Yes. I didn't see any of the terms consistency, but you may want to check again. Uh, 
It is in the, did you read version A? Sorry? Did you read version A? Uh, version, it, probably versions, yeah. I yeah, so, so the latest one tries to align okay. with your, okay. your stuff. Okay. Then I, I, I take that back. Okay. Version 7 was written before, oh. before, the, okay. before you. I don't know. I checked which one. I don't remember, but I'll okay. check again. Okay, thanks. Okay. It reference to that draft and then put down, it, it has the new name, home, uh, DPA, okay. home, as a, and then it says in, in this job, it just abbreviate to to DPA and so on. I, I think all the other four deputy items, work team items, if they if you use consistent terminology, then everything will be you know good. So uh, just, it, it just don't define new terms. Yeah, yeah just, home and access. Yeah. But then they put in parentheses because there are so many figures. No, no, no. My I point is, room, so I just right, put down right. the parentheses. We abbreviate. Sure. If you want us to abbreviate something, let's do that there and let's use one consistent terminology. That's all. Already, you know, there are too many terms. My point is, let's not make it any more confusing. That's all. Whatever you can do. Yeah. Okay. Alex Petrescu. Um, this is a comment on the protocol diagram that you have shown, the yes. message exchanges. Um, it looks uh, very promising um, to my uh, opinion, and I would like to point uh, a little uh, 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 issue that could be a relationship with the DHC working group. Do you know the DHC working group? DHC. Yeah, yeah. DHC, the ones that develop DHC. DHC working group. Okay. okay. So there is a, you have there a uh, operation called forwarding table update. Yes. You see this text? Yes. Now in DHC working group, there is a similar problem that is happening with the DHCP relay. Yes. And currently there is discussion in that working group about this forwarding table update okay and it would be meaningful to to, to relate somehow what we do here what DHC may do in the future or may not do at all or something <laughs> but this this show the relevance of the of of this work it's a it i mean it is relevant that you describe it here and that other people talk about the same problem okay. that makes it a, a problem that may need to be addressed uh, or unsolved somehow, okay? Uh, okay, uh, it just called the forwarding update here for simplicity. Uh, yes. What is behind it is basically uh, because the working for is basically emphasizing on the centralized control plan and distributed data plan and then the uh, other team have built all in all those signals. Okay. So, so that's why we didn't describe how to do it. Uh, we think yes. that uh, uh, probably macro sim or whatever uh, with the control plan talking to the data plan uh, whatever signal they had uh, we would use it that's why I didn't elaborate yeah. but if the DCP had something I'll look at that also yes they they have the same problem I think but they don't talk uh, forwarding data plane or something but I think they may have the same problem are they also separate control plan and the data plan no I don't think oh then that would be a that would be more complicated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not easy if you don't have a common control plane. Well, control plane, data plane is a tool. Yes. Not everybody uses the same tool. Okay. okay. But the problem is there independently of the tool. A long time ago, we, we gave an example of using BGP, but BGP is a controversial issue. That's why we removed that in this chart. Okay, I understand. Okay. So also the AD for DHC. Um, so Alex, like you're right, but it's not the same place. Okay, so so there is like a routing update mechanism that's thought off, but it's not relevant to this case because it's coming from a different place. Okay, so it's not in the same location in the picture. It should be in the DHCP server picture. So there's like a DR and RR that's like uh, Ian is in the room. So like Ian can probably if he was not checking his email, he couldn't probably. <laughs> uh, so Ian, he was talking about the stuff where, um, like you were talking about the uh, the DHCP relay and the routing delegating because of that, right? Like so, I think that's what he's referring to. So I don't think it's relevant here personally, Alex. But uh, so uh, 
Ian, he is talking about the forwarding table update line in there. So I, I think it's not the same thing, but yeah, if uh, you or Alex have different opinions, we can talk about it. I don't know whether there is time now to talk about or not, but yeah, I would like, you know. Ah, okay, so the, indeed, um, the operation that DHCP, that DHC working group talks about is happening mainly in the AR, the AR access router, if the AR is a relay. That's the problem that DHC working group has. Here we talk about forwarding table update in the AR and also in the DHCP servers and all the intermediate uh, routers. That is, uh, that is the point Suresh is making. But at the same time, it's operation called forwarding table update. So it's the same operation, the same problem for, from my perspective. Maybe it doesn't have this scaling issue. The, the DHC pro problem does not have this scaling issue that the DMM has, but uh, it's still, there is a need to update the forwarding table in DMM and also in uh, DHC. So this is my response to this. Okay. And we, we, I'm, I would like to discuss this further. Actually, I already started discussing it with uh, Francis Dupont. I don't know if you know Francis Dupont. And uh, we look from uh, some um, vendor, um, equipment vendor that may have interest in this and to try to build up uh, support, maybe write some new internet draft about this. <laughs> In Farah. So uh, yeah, we've got got a similar set of message flows here, and and I mean, looking at this, I'm not, I don't have any particular depth with it, but it looks like a similar, uh, a similar problem to what we've been talking about. Um, what I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with with the specific functionality of the devices that we're talking about as the as the ARs in this case. Um, I, I think there's something to talk about though. Yeah, I. I as a result of yesterday's DHCP meeting, it looks like there's some, well, we, we need to write something up or dig out an old document that may describe this stuff. So it may be a topic that's coming back to life in DHC anyway. So it's worth, it, it would be worth following the work in there and I'd be happy to talk to you about it afterwards. Okay, so we, we will reference to, so you are writing a job already. Right? Well, I, um, um, we heard yesterday in DHC that there may okay. already be a, an older draft that, uh, okay. that covers this kind of thing. So that was going to be my first, first thing was to review that and, uh, and see whether the text in there is good, whether that's something that, uh, that you know, we, could, we could bring back to life. Yeah. Well, right now what the job is put down is that an example could be BGP uh, update, but that is a controversial. So if you have a separate control data plan, you can do that faster and more scalable. My, that, my that's in the existing text. And uh, if there's something better, uh, we can certainly improve that. I mean, in terms of scoping it as a DHCP problem, then it will be the specification of the relay behavior in terms of what that needs to do. When, you when it comes to things like, how do you advertise this to the rest of the network? I suspect that it, you know, within the scope of a DHC document, it's going to be fairly loose in terms of saying, you know, this, yes. this action needs to happen. There are a number of ways you could do it. Um, you know, the rest is down to you. Yeah. Uh, if you use the control plan to a data plan, and you could use some other protocol that could be outside, uh, like Open Four or something. That's yeah, why. I mean, I mean, that's why I didn't it's describe it. Yeah, I mean that 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 is a, a functional operation that needs to happen yeah. as part of this process to make it work. Um, yeah. But you know, it's really an implementation kind of, uh, or, you know, a deployment oh. uh, question as to do you do this through static routes? Do you do you know, that summarize everything? Do you do it through BGP or another IGP? Whatever that happens to be. So maybe we, we change the text to that this is an implementation mm. choice and the different choices, something like that. Um, I, I, yeah. I well, haven't read the draft, so I, yeah. I, can't, I can't comment on the yeah. draft. What, what I would say that the uh, now you know the suspects, yes. so it's up to you now like a, no, to dig out what, what is the issue, whether it actually affects this document, something to care about or not. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. uh, well, so I, I mean, as I say, it's a, a topic that's, uh, that's we're planning on looking at in DHC. So, it, you know, if you follow the work there, and you know, that will that will give you a better idea of 
the way the DHC uh, working group sees this problem, you can see if it's relevant from that. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Jim, Anthony, yeah, yes. I have comments. Uh, so, in, in your solution, I think that is uh, the example of the solutions. Yeah. Did you use the uh, forwarding path signaling uh, management? That, uh, you, uh, can you repeat the yeah, question again? Uh, do you consider to use the F, F, uh, FPS uh, message that we just discussed? Yeah, that's, that, that's basically. Uh, they will probably do the uh, forwarding table update and also move the context. Uh, the context, those things would move over there. That's why. That's why the job basically reference to other job for for the complete solution for all the details. Yeah. Are we done with the presentation? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll send some comments. Okay. Good. All right. Let's move. Thank you, Anthony. We will do the uh, the adoption call later on. So uh, let's move on. So uh, now we are for the end in the uh, VIP maintenance track. So Charlie, quick update. Well, this is a this is a very short presentation, probably too short, and it's uh, all the way from the very abstract to the extremely concrete. Um, basically, there's a uh, in uh, draft RFC 4283 that specifies a, a couple of ways to identify mobile nodes, um, particular uh, network address identifier, NAI, and so on. And since that time, there's been a lot of suggestions about uh, how we need to actually be able to use other kinds of identifiers. And so this, uh, this document specifies a number of other kinds of uh, essentially tabulates another uh, a set of other kinds of identifiers and um, uh, just specifies how they fit in the same uh, extension. So, so basically the draft was uh, done uh, quite some months ago and then uh, got to comment that uh, there really wasn't enough information there to uh, understand about how the uh, identifiers were to be uh, used in the uh, extension. And uh, there's a bit of a balancing act because on the one hand, uh, this is not intended to be the normative specification uh, for the format of those identifiers. On the other hand, we want this extension to be useful and for people to understand how to uh, use the identifiers. So as a compromise, uh, there was a lot of text inserted into the um, into the documents, probably twice as long as it was before. But the other text is purely descriptive and just goes through each one of the uh, various kinds of mobile node identifiers to uh, give an idea about uh, what it is, why you might want to use it, and a few hints about the format. So the new the new kinds of uh, mobile node identifiers are are either RFID sorts of identifiers or IEEE uh, EUI64 addresses, for instance, MAC addresses. Uh, we allow IPv6 uh, addresses to be identifier. Um, the DCP has a set of four kinds of DUIDs uh, that can be used as identifiers. And finally, 3GPP has, uh, for instance, the MZ uh, that can be used as identifier. So. Uh, so that, I think, and it's a relatively simple idea, a relatively short draft, and I think we've addressed all the comments. Uh, of course, I'd be delighted to get more comments from anybody that would uh, read the draft. Other than that, I think it's uh, probably done. Yep. Thank you, Charlie. So, uh, it was three and me who were guilty for this uh, request for this excess text. So, basically, if three, if you are happy, I am happy, and then the working group is happy. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I created quite a bit of work for this, but that was my the reason was you know if we leave it so vague, I thought you know vendors won't be able to implement it. That was my concern. But again, I really appreciate you putting. <laughs> I created a lot of work for you. Thank you so much. And. Uh, 
I think uh, I read the browse the document. I think it's in a good shape. But I just want to very you know just if everybody can review it, that's good. But I think it's ready to move on to IES. Yeah. I don't mind if you create work for me. Full employment. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you, so, yeah. So the plan is that, that I move this document forward, and the uh, we are done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so this is the end of the um, the kind of exciting presentations for today. And the uh, <coughs> the next thing, uh, what we have on the agenda, so Dabeng and I were discussing that we need to kind of, and we got some requests that we had two documents here that. Uh, would deserve to be part of the um, working group items. Uh, also, kind of get the uh, complete our, our um, milestones. So, uh, uh, so we have two documents now on table. So the uh, <clears throat> the, the uh, what what the working team for was working on on the deployment models. That draft was published like months ago. So. Uh, uh, I hope that people have read it. Uh, there's some good work put into it, and the uh, now now the, the editor is willing to kind of give up his rights for the uh, mastering the document for the working group. And then the other one is the uh, Anthony's work that has really been around for for a couple of years now. So I think that it's time to kind of. Uh, to get that also into the working group and let the um, finish the stuff and move on on that on that work. So uh, let's start with the the, uh, the older work. So so the draft chain the amenities will be anchoring. So uh, I will do the kind of adoption calls. All all these will be of course ratified in the mailing list. But the um, just doing the normal poll. So who has read? some version, hopefully the latest version of the uh, distributed mobility anchoring draft. Please raise your hand. Okay, we got about 10 hands. Uh, then the uh, who thinks this document is ready for to be adopted to a working group. Please raise your hand. Six, okay. And who thinks the opposite? Or meaning that this document should not be adopted as a working group item. And if you raise your hand, you need to state the reason why. I see zero hands. Okay, that's a good indication. So we'll run this poll through again on the mailing list after the meeting and, and the um, the, uh, get the uh, second last uh, milestone added to the uh, completed. Okay, then for the uh, the other draft, I might actually want to pull it up. Maybe this should have been the follow up of this should have we should have had a maybe a presentation to just remind everyone. So mm -hmm. we should have had a presentation probably on this one. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, so the thing is that uh, that this topic has been on the uh, our charter for uh, for a long time. This one? Yeah. It's my apple that is causing problems. <laughs> okay. So this is the document that we are talking about. It's going to be informational document, uh, not that long, describing the uh, 
deploy models that we have seen these this stuff being talked about for a long time around the uh, FSM concept, right? Right. So we gave at least like three or four presentations on this. That's one. Thing. Yeah. And uh, the authors, you know, we have to add it. Like there are a bunch of contributors to the document. Some of them will get moved as the authors, primary authors. Yeah. So this is the kind of basis of the work that the, the uh, what we heard the first presentation today. So all this terminology and all this these cases, how it works, is actually based on this model that is described here. So uh, it would be kind of logical move also to the adopt that so that the uh, CPDP work actually would make more sense when we have the actual model that is trying to apply to. So, uh, um, ask the same questions, who has read this document? Maybe I should also raise my hand. Okay. Uh, and the, um, then the other question, who thinks this document should be adopted as a working group item? Raise your hand, please. Yeah, six, seven. Who thinks the opposite? Please raise your hand. Okay, this is like asking for a note taker. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, you get the same response. Uh, all right, looks like there's a, there's a, just because that, that, that we didn't have the presentation, I just want to make sure that no one feels offended. So the purpose of the uh, meetings is not to show PowerPoints. We can also do stuff without having the PowerPoint stuff. So just who is willing to kind of contribute to this work also? I mean, the the the, uh, the uh, deployment models like uh, reviewing and, and the giving comments. All right, cool. Thank you. you got the names? Yeah, I know. I could pretty much predict who is showing their hands. Hmm? Yeah, I know. Danny, Carlos, yeah. and she, she Yeah. <clears throat> All right, thank you. So we will, yeah, so we will run, run the same same thing through the mailing list. So if someone wasn't here present, they can voice their concerns and stuff like that. But, but the indication was pretty strong. Okay. Um, then moving on. So I will show my uh, magnificent chair slide. Uh, all right, so after these two adoptions, we have pretty much nailed down the milestones that we had. It is awesome. And a lot of this work is like a progress work for, for chairs to make sure and the AD to review them in an expeditious manner and the ISG doing the financial and so on. So that brings us to a question, what next? So uh, we have some time now, like uh, a bit too much time actually, but the, uh, we are going to go through this one. Yep, Charlie. Well, I wanted to ask something that's slightly irrelevant, or not according to this, but uh, and I should have said it before, but I'm gotten behind on um, reading the forwarding plane control plane document, F FPC, and I was a little bit surprised at how little I understood of the presentation this morning, especially because of the JSON uh, formulation and so on. Well, maybe I'm the only one. But I just wanted to say that, uh, um, in particular, for something that's as important as this, um, I think the whole working group really needs to understand it. And um, I'm hoping that, um, uh, that well, I did look at the, the, the draft just uh, earlier, maybe 30 minutes ago, 
it, it looks like um, I've seen IEEE documents that are a little bit of text and incredible numbers of tables of parameters. And so it's not really trivial to understand such things like that, especially because you spend all of your time trying to figure out what each one of the 173 different parameters actually means. So uh, I'm not right now, I mean, again, I admit I'm behind on this development, but I, on average, don't find that uh, such ways of specifying protocols is uh, intuitively obvious. Yeah, one question in the valley. I think that is an extremely complex work, actually. I think if you look at the FPC document, and it's a lot of work went in, not from me, but my, from my co-authors, like you know, San, Marco, Lili. And like it is, a, it is a complex problem. I think what really helps is truly, you know, I think working with everybody reviews and make some contributions and such makes recommendations as how we can improve the documentation. I think that would really help. But these guys have put an amazing amount of efforts. I, I, I'm I not just saying that been, that, yeah. this is a result of laziness, yeah. not, not by any means. Yeah, right. I'm just saying that in other situations, I mean, if you tried to read all the uh, information elements for GTP or some of these other documents, it's unbelievable. Hmm. And it's, it comes to the point where you cannot maintain in your mind a model that allows you to make sure it's all consistent. And in fact, maybe it's not. Maybe GTP is inconsistent. Who knows? I mean, who would ever be able to figure it out? So that's why I'm just suggesting that uh, for something of such central importance for this working group, almost everybody has to agree that they understand it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, go ahead. Sprint. Um, first off, I, I'd like to blame Shri for any anything with respect to the document, just so that's that's out there. Um, secondly, I, you're you're absolutely right because uh, as part of this work, we had to look at GTP. We we obviously um, uh, look look at PIP and, and IP mobility in general, and so it's it's definitely non-trivial. No matter how long you've been doing this. And uh, that's part of the reason that, that it stimulated us uh, over at Sprint to do the implementation. Um, just because we felt the risk required us uh, to, to really push ahead and, and start mitigating. And it's part of that work and, and Satura San's work that we're able to, to coalesce to a few concepts. And, and I think also as well, that's why we saw the two models diverge temporarily. Uh, really reflecting the, the different philosophies, and I think you know we had a question earlier about you know was is this similar to a MIB? I, I, I I've done MIB work. I would even argue it's it's even worse than a MIB. So if you think of your worst nightmare, right, bring in uh, GTP IEs and MIBs, and then trying to actually meet a little bit of call processing capability. This is really that that kind of work. Um, but I feel at this point, based at least from from my confidence in in the implementation as well as uh, the, the expertise of, of the co-authors uh, that I'm working with, that we have a good way forward and we've simplified to, to the concepts. Now, to be fair, um, as well, right, we, we just got this done this week. Um, what I think we need, uh, as you're telling the rest of the working group, is, is, is more eyes. Uh, what I also hope we're able to deliver uh, it's, the, the Yang model is, is ancillary in my mind, but what I hope we're able to deliver in the text are much simpler concepts than have been provided to us, especially from uh, you know a lot of those text specs that we have to stare at um, uh, that are that are in, in some cases quite painful, no matter what time of day you're reading them. But um, uh, we we do to your point, we do need everybody's help. On this to get this solid and, and get this straight and, and get this efficient because depending on how you implement whether it's over the wire uh, as, as in mode 2 or whether we actually run it through like an SDN controller with a formal Yang model we, we want to make sure it's absolutely consistent for all implementers so I, I can't emphasize enough that we need everybody's help thanks all right thank you um, so so the as I said earlier that, that we have some kind of cleaning of table stuff going on which is kind of then most of the concern of the uh, working group chairs me and da Peng to kind of push the documents out of the working group and that's most like uh, like a process thing very exciting but but we need to do that but parallel to that 
so uh, so that that's not supposed to kind of hinder the uh, or stop the other work so uh, because we are just doing that in a parallel so the the question really is is like uh, what next what else so um, there's already been a couple of topics that came out like uh, anything new that we need okay the new is kind of it depends from where you look at it but like a uh, new work for example that there was a host and the host was killed so like a kind of thing that that we need to do something one one thing for example as as an concrete example that came up is like the actual on wire protocol between the uh, network and the host bringing this 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 coloring information about the prefixes and addresses and stuff like that that's one thing or do we kind of that kind of work can be seen as as an extension of the uh, just adding a milestone it kind of fits into the bucket that we have today and the uh, what was also brought up is like the we we might need to do work on the on wire formats for the uh, models that we have so that's again kind of extension of the existing charter so you just put the new milestones the other thing is like we can actually recharge them and, and the uh, had more concrete goals what to do next or or the um, then the, the of course the worst cases then that the someone above our decision level says that no way not anymore so uh, just like a, this is the discussion that I want to have now I admit that I didn't kind of advocate this in advance uh, basically because uh, I thought that that the yeah, just to let you kind of be in a working mode and then initiate the discussion today and, and come back that on the mailing list and for the next meeting and so on and the kind of whatever I collected here something like the uh, potential or resurrected work whatever we still have in a kind of vicinity but uh, what I want to say is something like that. The, uh, we should kind of, okay, we still have the kind of maintenance burden of the mobile IP. Hold and behold, that is still deployed. So there might be something coming up. I really don't want to see new work items on the, uh, someone wanted to extend proxy mobile IP or mobile IP for something new. There must really be a good reason to do that. Uh, so you need to demonstrate the product need. Uh, fixing bugs is okay uh, but we really need if if we bring up something new work or reach out or we really need to kind of bring in like a new stuff something that actually also like matters so it's like a it's always asking for the who is the um, customer is their need sometimes there's a good thing to do kind of proactive work if you really know that something is needed by the other side of the industry but of, of course as we know by history that that you really need to get a real pull for somewhere to get some IETF technology to be deployed and the uh, demonstrating this kind of need always help but the uh, yeah you know the story okay so Suresh Krishnan, Eli hat on um, this is all fine to have, but I don't want to have this discussion now. So personally, I want all the items gone before any of this comes up. Okay. Okay. Because the speed at which this working group has made progress concerns me. Okay. So if you add like new items, Sri, I'll finish. Yeah. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> so <laughs> she's like, oh, no, I'm like working no, really no, no, fast. No. Like, but yeah. So okay. I just <laughs> right. So I would like to see like at least like the, the cleaning the table right before any of this comes up and I'm personally open to like all the three options you showed okay but I would like the table cleaned before this comes up or at least like just like still documents up for adoption work items not without a working group document right so I want those at least gone um, when they are going into last call maybe we can start discussing okay. it okay so your definition of clean table is that they are all heading out. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. So because expect like the, a very yeah. accuracy working group last calls. What? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. um, look at working group last calls, see how many reviews we get, right? And see how they go through the ESG. Because just taking new items, that is not going to give more reviewers, right? Like so, and actually it might reduce the reviewer pool because they might be like working on a, as an author on another draft. So that's my concern. So that's why I don't want to have this discussion now, okay? Yeah. Personally, okay? You're free to have that discussion, but like, <laughs> I won't like handle it. Okay, much. but this is the thing that you brought it up here is exactly what we, what I wanted to hear like a, as okay. a next step. And now we have people that with an opinion, so. Okay, I'll just stick around here in case you yeah. don't beat me up, but I'll stick around. Yeah, that we'll do anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one comment to Suresh is like on the pace at which this initially the group was all over the place, right? Essentially, the, there was no convergence for two years. But if you look at the last one year, there's an agreement, an architectural agreement, right? At least the, work, the proper documents are in place, right? Mm -hmm. Whether they're adopted or not, at least there's agreement from all the folks. But I think what is important is I think we need to just make sure that, you know, people are not thinking this like a done group or something. It's like shutting down May quarter or something, right? I think if we can just send the proper message, that will be good. But uh, I think it makes sense. I also agree with you, like, you know, first let's clear the table and then we talk about the- As I said, like I'm, I'm open to like yeah. the other options, right? Like right. than closing, but I'm just, yeah. I want to see the work cleared out, right? So that everybody gets cycles, right? Like I, I know, like you said, like Marco and Lyle and uh, Satoru San are working hard, right? Like let them get this thing out of the plate and then go ahead mm -hmm. to this right. other thing, right? right. Because if you have this on your plate, like that means they're not reviewing somebody else's document, right? Like so, yeah. and so get that out of the plate and then we go and look at other stuff. Okay, okay. thanks. Danny? Okay, I agree with that. I, I was, I, I went to the mic when I saw a call it a day for DMM. We, st we still have a lot of work. It's I mean, still an option, right? Like so. Okay, I think we need, I think we need more milestones for the existing charter. We don't need new stuff in the charter. But we have a lot of things that we didn't control. So, that was option one, like in yeah. the only stuff. So, so like uh, 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 control data separation, we didn't complete. On demand, we didn't complete. Um, email, discuss on email. Right? We're not going to agree on it now, right? Like, so like, right, it's fine. Right. Like, but, so but put in the new items, like get some. Oh, no, these are not new items. These are ex existing items we need to complete. We just need new milestones because we don't have those. Now, other but than new items, I mean new milestones, right? Because he still needs to like go and get them and get them approved by me at the end, right? So because for example, that, to complete the control and data separation uh, uh, document, do we need uh, to go through you? Okay, if it's something in the charter, which it, needs to add a milestone, it still needs to go through the approval process, but not a recharter process. So Yoni and Dapeng still need to go in, add something in there, and I had to look at it and approve, right? Okay. And I'm saying like without like the current stuff getting done, I will not approve. Like okay. new stuff coming through. So, okay. So my feeling is we still have because work to do. You're still Danny, right? You you have another thing to finish. So finish right. that first, and then put the other thing on the table. Right? Okay. I want to be able. To, I want to be. Uh, I want the opportunity to finish. So okay. Okay. yeah. So so the thing is also like like a like 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 from from experience like you you are now entering a phase that that you can see that there's a light at the end of the tunnel of doing something else. You can already start preparing for it. That's that you don't work in a serial manner. So you can build the uh, stuff for the uh, so that you have something concrete. If and when we reach the point that we really check that what we are doing next and what is the next item. If you have complete work there, it's, it always helps. Of course, there's a, a threat that is a wasted effort if 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 he decides differently. But that's kind of you need to take that risk. I, I think I would, I would I would be more comfortable if you are like one meeting cycle away from that point, but I don't believe so. Okay, yeah. so th there's a draft that has not been updated, like Marcos, like and Lyle's draft, like that has me not been updated in a meeting cycle. So usually in IETF terms, like a slow working group is like one which updates drafts only per meeting cycle, right? But this one was updated for the last cycle, not for this one. Like you said, took a long time. Not criticizing. I know like it, it's tough, right? But I'm just saying we are more than one meeting cycle away from closing this stuff out. So that's why we can do that in parallel, but it's too far in advance to figure that out, okay? Um, Marco Liu, um, So regarding the things that are still on the table, I fully agree and I blame myself a little bit to not be more active in reviewing other drafts to progress this uh, more quickly. 
regarding things that are on the table very long, such as the FPC work, I think it's something new that came to DMM. So, so far we worked on extensions to PMF Mobile IP, which was more the horizontal way, right? So now we are looking vertically, which was new to the working group. So we um, had a steep learning curve on that, That's fine. right? But um, having that knowledge, I think um, we have um, things that we can complete now, as you propose it. But then we have tools to really address these items here. And I think um, looking at these bullets, mobility for 5G, IoT, I think there are many customers in particular 3GPP looking at next generation. So I think uh, also looking around in the ITF, the DMM working group is a perfect platform to address many of these items here. Yeah. So from my point of view, I, I like, a, uh, I just did this very small scan about what is stuffing up going around. I was surprised, like, like I thought, kind of, I have this nice idea that the mobility as a concept is dead, but more and more people are working on it, on it again. They just view it differently and for different use cases, but they always fall back to the same things, like uh, I need my end host to move from here and there, end host happens to be something, for example, inside a data center or whatever, it's a task, whatever. But they're still fiddling with the same problems, but they try to solve it differently, not tunneling, translation, whatever they have, ID locator split. But it's still there. Okay. They just work on in, in their own respective areas or have their individual trust shopping around. Okay. But whatever. So. I have a suggestion, okay? So, uh, if you are interested in like doing like, let's say, call it next gen mobility or something, request a mailing list, non working group mailing list, okay? Grant it to you, okay? Just take the discussion there, but not in this working group yet, okay? Let the working group make progress on its milestones, get it done, bring the stuff in here. That's clear, but if um, the current milestones are closed, so you don't see this happening in the DMM follow-up, or you run? No, I'm not saying that at okay. all. But I want the current milestones it's done. It's just about the discussion. To have I, it I want it from. done. I don't want the working group to go off like, hey, new thing, let's go work on it. And then everything just stays on. Because like the second you put 5G on something, right, everybody's going to just move on there. Okay, like all this, your draft will not get a single review afterwards, right? Because everybody's like, there's gonna be seven drafts for 5G mobility, and everybody's gonna like start reading the other people's drafts and trying to figure that stuff out. Nothing will happen to the current milestones. That's yeah. my fear. Like I could, I'm happy to be proven wrong, but like it's, we've seen this pattern, like we've been in this mobility thing for like way too long, all of us like in yeah. here, right? Like, so it's, we know the pattern and I think it's the wrong thing to do, okay? But, as I said, like I'm willing to be prone wrong. If all these documents finish working group last call by like so, let's have that discussion in, in the in the DMM meeting, right? I just think it's a low probability of happening, but that's fine too. If that happens, let's have that in in Seoul. Let's have the discussion in Seoul, or even before, whenever the documents get cleared out, let's have that discussion. Yeah, I think I got your point, Charlie. Hi, uh, I'm Charlie Perkins. I, I think that uh, I'm just going to make a little thought experiment. Let's say that we finish all the documents uh, by Seoul or sometime before the end of the year, and then we said, oh, now we can work on 5G, and we look at 5G, and we realize, well, this forwarding plane thing doesn't meet our needs for 5G. Then what do we do? Start over again? I think that the whole point of DMM from the very beginning was because we were guided by what we perceived to be, you know, the future of uh, mobility management, and a really important component of that is 5G. Well, since then we've had a lot of cloud and uh, who knows what IoT really means. But uh, in particular, I think that uh, somehow we ought to pay attention to what. Uh, the world expects from 5G and make sure that our work is meeting that need. Yeah. Right, okay, so th that's one way to go forward, but that's still, I still wouldn't allow new work, right? If you think like 5G stuff is gonna affect the current documents, I'm gonna keep all the current documents pending in the working group until somebody does an evaluation without like, so what I don't want happening is like some shiny new stuff that people start working on. So what you say makes perfect sense, 
but the right way to do that is to make sure that like we somehow figure out what the 5G requirements are, which I don't know, like like there's no stuff we got from 3GPP or IEEE, it's still pending in all both of them, right? Okay, so the option is to wait for all these documents for that to finish, right? Which I don't think is reasonable. If you think it's reasonable, that's fine too. It, but neither of these justify starting new work on 5G mobility yeah. at this point. So, yeah. So, one thing: if you go and read uh, 23799 uh, and go for for what they call these KPIs and different stuff there, you can see that that what they have. I'm I'm not now advocating 5G. I will follow exactly what what Suresh is going to say, obviously. But the the thing is that. A lot of things that we have been doing here, you can find the same concepts in there. Just like a, then a matter of like a, whether it's actually a match in 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 a practical terms. But the 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 ideas that this extremely fast moving working group has been doing for a while, you can find those exactly the same things there. So we, they have the concept of of the uh, the. Uh, like on depart mobile, they have the kind of anchor distribution, they have the control per user per separation, all this stuff is there. So oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's present in where and where? 20, 3 gpbts 23799. Yeah. That's what he's saying. But yeah. yes. Well okay, so sure. I mean 3 gpp is uh, you might say leading the field in 5G and they have a lot of vectors pushing in the same direction. But nevertheless I think IETF has a lot to say about this, and um, um, if we had a, if our work can be shown to be relevant, it'll make a huge difference in the acceptance of what we've done. Yeah, that, that, that's fine, Charlie. Right, but what I don't want to happen is like we wait on these documents for 5G, right? No, no, no. So, I, so if wait, you're, if wait you're is point... a bad word. Okay. It's a four-letter word, okay. and I don't want that word. <laughs> okay. But I'm just saying that we have to be careful about this. So. Send a proposal, right? Like, so if your proposal is like we need to somehow cross check with 5G and make sure our stuff makes our needs, that's done by the view of the current documents with like some other information you might have from some other source, and that's perfectly fine, right? But if it's saying like, okay, this stuff is lacking, I want to do some new work, that has to happen after these things are done. Yeah, that's it. Okay, there's you know, there's 5G mailing lists or 5G and whatever IP and so yeah. on, so. I mean, there's and in IEEE, there's a huge effort to you know make sure that uh, 802 wireless is relevant for 5G and so on. So, so there's all these places where extremely good work is being done, and I just don't think I don't want it to be that our work is left out. That's fine, Charlie. Yeah, makes sense. So, uh, so if this is like about better communication, I think we'll work that out, right? Like, so there's going to be this, uh, as you know, there's there's going to be this IETF IEEE leadership meeting in September. And then that's something you can bring up over there. So you can probably like put together a bunch of slides or whatever to show to those people or send like a LS or something saying like, hey, this is like work and this seems relevant to you. That's fine, right? And then probably we can get more in reviews from them or comments from them or say, like, oh, this doesn't meet our needs. I think that's, I think, more useful at this point rather than like saying like, oh, we'll do new stuff. And that's what I'm concerned about. Like, yeah. Okay, so uh, I think I fully agree with both Rich and said that we should, you know, finish our uh, existing document and finish our milestone. So I really encourage the members in this working group to, you know, participate in discussion more actively and to help to review the document. And then, um, in the same time, I think uh, we can trigger some discussion in the mailing list if you have concrete ideas. Sure. Thanks. Uh, you have a question, everyone. So, uh, regarding the 3 gp issue, so the SA2 group, SA2 uh, group, which is architecture, uh, they pretty much finalizing the requirements. And I've seen an email from the CT4 group, which are actually doing implementation on wire protocols, and they're actually contemplating ITF protocols as one of their options. So they have a list of options of things of how to do this uh, user. Um, they call that control user plane separation. Uh, protocol and one of them is ITF protocol, and I think they listed NetConf as their option, but they probably haven't dealt right. Way. But yes. they probably haven't delved into the details and to understand exactly what's going on there. So uh, they're opening the gate for us. We should really step in. So 
what exactly is your suggestion, right? Like, so if, if you're saying like, we send the liaison to SA2 or CT4, we can do that, right? Like, so we have a communication link. So working group sit down and write a liaison statement, I'll send it off. Uh, also, as, as said before, review the SA2 requirements to make sure that we're not too off saying, well, you did a nice job, but this doesn't matter our, our requirements. Okay. And so do, do you go to the CT4 meetings, you all? Or? Uh, no, I went to the SA2 meeting. I can go to CT4. So uh, I, I have an action item for you. So it, it's like really good to have. So what happens in the way, like I think like you know, like a like bunch of us have actually done this before, is that you go to 3GPP, like say like this draft, put in a dependency. Let's say like you take Lyle's draft, right? Like and, and put it as a dependency in mm -hmm. a 3GPP list. There's actually a spreadsheet that tracks IETF dependencies for 3GPP. So if you get on that list, then like 3GPP knows this is there. It's like 3GPP is watching kind of thing. And it signals to the IETF that there's like an interested consumer on this. So that's like some action that comes from the other side. Okay. okay. So we can do the LS like, okay, so we can have a LS for the next SA2 meeting if possible, if the working group comes up with something, but then your job is to make sure it gets added. And uh, just like uh, Jörg Meyer from Huawei, who's the, who's the liaison on that direction, right? Who can add it to the dependency list. And mm -hmm. then like we know that 3GPP is interested in this document. Okay, but that, that always requires that someone or some employer, even me of individuals, someone still finds us, that they have interest on the 3GPP, for example, in 3GPP or IEEE yeah. side doing the thing. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Uh, he volunteered. <laughs> so, thank you. Anyway. Just one comment. I completely agree with you, Suresh. I think the liaison is a very good idea, right? I think probably what we can do is proactively ask 3GPP. We can say that, you know, we are working on this document. We believe it's relevant to you. Can you guys provide us some feedback? Whether you Is it in line with you or is it not? Right? Sure. If they say we don't care about it, then we can. That, that's useful too. Sounds right? good. So. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, Yoni, Rapeng, can you sit down like work on something to send, to, send off to them in the next couple of months? Yeah. Yeah, I will wait for two things because the, the especially for the CT4 work on the CP and DP separation that is going on and not going to be concrete. So we would need the uh, 04 version and the uh, deployment model to be uh, working group items. So that that makes a sense. Okay. So, and because uh, honestly, before we have the um, the the um, network host communication part as a working group document or at some level that's the kind of most concrete word at the moment that that kind of fits in a purpose what they are doing okay sounds good thanks so work on it like send it off we'll ship it off yeah. <laughs> you are free to go thank you so yeah, so it's 11.57, we still have 33 minutes, so we can fill our thumbs for half an hour or go away. But, so anyway, uh, I call the day for today, for this meeting, so thank you for attending. There's a, a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, me and Tap and we try to work as fast as possible to get the, all the uh, adoption calls down and, and all this other stuff so that we can move forward. And on the um, then the rest of the group, you need to do also your part. So thank you, and we see in Seoul in November.